chosen my article, I'm going to go ahead and start in Photoshop. And I'm going to open up a new page and set it to 9 inches by 6 inches for this tutorial. It's going to be a horizontal orientation, 300 resolution, RGB color mode is fine, and background is white. So now that we have our new screen, I'm going to go ahead and I've opened up all the images I want to use. Some of them I've taken a picture of myself and some of them I found off the internet. The ones that you found off the internet, I will ask you to um, include the work cited into the comments of web courses. So as you find images, go ahead and record that link or that book. Um, I'm not too specific in terms of cited. You just need to include the link or the URL or the artist name that you grabbed the image from. So here I have just two links that I found. As I do a Google search, I will just go ahead and copy the URL into it. So this was one of them I found. I wanted to use this digital illustration. It was free for people to use. So I went ahead and grabbed it. Um, some tips about searching images. I'm sure you uh, are well aware, but just in case, if you go to the Tools section in Google, you can actually specify the size. So um, if you're finding that you just can't find a, right, a big image, you know, I usually specify large. And that will guarantee that I have a good size resolution, right? You want anything above 400 pixels to get something good for, for this assignment. You can also even click usage rights. So there's options here, right, for if you can use them or not. But uh, for the academic purposes of this class, I'll just ask that you cite all of your images you found online. But there's some that I've taken. So um, the first image we're going to look at that I grabbed is something I took of just me and my phone. So I highly recommend you, you take pictures yourself in the wild. Um, there's some like this one I'm going to use that I found. You can see it's quite pixelated. Um, and then others, I've, I've used Adobe Capture, uh, which is the app I, I recommended last, I think, last project for uh, taking pictures of things around you. So some of them I might not use, but I was really fascinated with the app and its ability to take things and turn it black and white. So even this little computer cord of mine I thought was really exciting that I might include into my um, project. And then there'll be others. So my idea here for this assignment is going to be talking about technology and, and having easy access. And here's my sketch on the screen right now. And so I'm not requiring you to have a sketch for this part of the assignment. Um, we did that last time, and I thought you guys ha created some really great sketches. So please sketch it out first, but I'm not requiring that you you submit that at all. Don't, you know, just let it allow you to plan ahead before you tackle, um, tackle the assignment. It just allowed me to kind of get everything out of my brain and arrange and it's probably going to change but it's a good way to get started so I'm going to pull up my first image and what I try to do is I try to take a picture against a neutral background I didn't do a great job down here so I'm going to show you an easy way and you've probably already seen this in your previous tutorial but first starting out with the magic wand tool right here to select. So having a neutral background really allows you to not have to do a lot of work. So I've set the tolerance level pretty low so it tries to grab all of these tones. And then you just have to keep specifying and keep, keep clicking. So it's doing a pretty good job because of the stark contrast. Now when you get down here it's not so great. So but I have pretty much what I need except just in my little arm right there but I'm okay with that and then for the rest of it I'm just gonna take the polygon lasso tool and I'm gonna hold shift and that's gonna grab the icons gonna have a little plus and then I'm gonna click and I'm gonna continue right along here and I'm gonna grab the negative space because that's what's selected so now you could see my whole arm is collect is 
um, cut out. So I could either decide to erase the backspace or I could go to select, inverse. So select up here, inverse. And now I can just grab um, my arm. You'll s I see a few little things out here. So what I can do out here is selected. So I'm going to go and hold option and it creates the negative. And I'm just going to click away. all of this stuff. You can see now it's deleting all of those things. Just like that. So now I have my option selected. Say you accidentally, and you've probably been here before, where you've accidentally clicked and your shape is gone. Just uh, undo like that. I'm going to delete this part and go ahead and get the plus back. So holding shift, you get the plus and you could just continue on. I can go outside the border, it doesn't matter. And just double click and you've added that. So it's a great little thing if you've accidentally double clicked while you're selecting something, not to fret, not to worry, right? Just hold shift and continue on. So I'm going to cut this away and I'm going to put it into my composition like so. So this is one of the first things I want people to notice is this hand and showing that it's almost like you're spying on this person or this is almost you. So I want it to be dominant on the page. I think in the left corner for now, just like my sketch. And I, I kind of want to create this shape and do things to it. Not so much the hand, but this shape. So I'm going to go in and use those polygon lasso tool again. I can even go and do the magic wand tool and see what I get. It's going to grab a lot of intricate things because of there's this highlight. Let me see if I can change the tolerance. Yeah, and then it starts to get into the shadow. Let's try it one more time. It's okay, that's a pretty good place to start. I can see down here though, it's starting to grab some of my hand. And it's a little messy, so I'm gonna undo it because it's pretty it's a pretty simple shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and with the polygon lasso tool start to cut this out. And all I want to do is, I'm not really cutting out the, um, the shape. I'm just going to almost separate it or create a new layer so I can adjust and edit this phone. Because I want to create some kind of spatial illusions with it. But I don't want to, I want to change the hand. If I mess up like that, doesn't look like a great little curve. Then I'll just fix it. I can also go ahead... and stop this if I wanted to and select my shape again hold if you go if you hover over your picture here in the layers panel holding command or control it will automatically select this so I don't have to worry about that curve right there I can then start to just erase the rest of the hand by holding and getting the, the negative bar now I only have to select a few areas like this and then around this thumb right so I'm sorry if you already know how to do this but something I just want to go over again and then since that part of the um phone selected, I, I've already got it. Oops. Looks like it decided to do something fun down here, so I'm just gonna... There we go. And now I have this. So I'm gonna cut and I'm gonna paste a new shape right on top to use later. So now I have two. I can mess around with this shape if I wanted to later. I could even create like I can darken it. I can... Oh! 
I'm just noticing a finger over here. So let me just do a quick delete. No big deal. Like so. I did not think about this, but <laughs> you're seeing my hand up really close. I am no hand model. I work with my hands a lot, so forgive me. <laughs> um, all right, now we have, I delete that. Yep, now we have just the phone by itself. So this opens up a lot of things and opportunities. Wow, the camera really captured all the grease marks too. Um, and I can go ahead and I can adjust things if I wanted to, if I want to make this phone even greasier, if I want to make it darker, so forth. Right now, I'm going to leave it as is until I get my other elements. I noticed a little weird thing on my thumb here. I think it's a bit of ink. Um, I can go into the clone stamp tool and I can just fix that briefly. So by holding option and Right next to it, I can just sample that area and then hover if I'm on the right layer and hover and then that immediately goes away. Notice a little from that easy selection, I'm going to go in and do a little bit of cleanup just by going to the eraser tool here, eraser tool. And then going to opacity and just just doing a little bit of clean up there. Nothing, nothing I'm not too worried about. Doesn't look obvious, but it's nice to clean that up and make it nice and sharp. And then some of the hairs here. Just clean that up a little bit more. Again, sorry, it's my hand. I can even go in and if I didn't want this anymore, I could go ahead and just select some of that and delete it. But no one's going to be looking this close. There we go. Eh. And there we go. Now I want to add a few more images. So I've got Ash Jeeves, I've got this, yeah, I'm, for some reason I was thinking about these window blinds and, and how they could represent the blocking of knowledge. So I'm going to go ahead and erase some of the stuff I don't need. So I've gone to the eraser tool again, eraser tool, and deleted. everything. So this tutorial you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing, right? I'm just showing you a few ways in which I manipulate imagery. So you could be grabbing images yourself and doing this. So this image was from Adobe Capture. So what's nice about Adobe Capture is it preserves the transparency. So all I have to do is just erase the imagery I don't want. I could also have just used my wand tool. I'm going to copy this in and I'm going to bring it over. See how big it is? So we're going to go to Edit, Transform, Scale. And you're, by holding shift and keeping the proportions, we're going to scale it down like so. What I want to do is I kind of want to put this over my phone. So I'm going to go to my layers panel and make sure it's the first thing here. Just like so. And then I want to go to Edit, Transform, Distort. And that's going to allow me to change the image to match the diagonal of the screen. 
What I need to do now is I'm going to hide that. I'm going to make this transparent so I can really see what's going on here. Yeah. Like I said, this was an image I made in, in uh, Adobe Capture. I just took a picture of the window. There's something nice about, right, like I said, using your own imagery. It, it, it just feels... There's some pride involved, you know, even though I didn't make these blinds, I took a picture of it. So, yeah. You could also make the case that this is more about privacy or anything, but I like the idea of the blinds representing the blocking of knowledge, the true understanding of something where you're getting a distorted view. And then I'm going to bring the opacity back up. It's even nice how it just hits that. And I'm going to use this here and let me duplicate this a few times actually. I'm going to duplicate this layer. And I'm going to hover over this. If you hold command and click, it grabs that. You could either go ahead and click this layer and shift control I to invert it. Select inverse to invert it. And now you have blinds that conform to that screen could also apply a mask. So that's why I duplicated one of these layers. Put this over the top of this. You can right click or hold control click. And go to create clipping mask. And you'll see now this area is masked by the shape of the phone. Let me hide this. Let me make this translucent so you can see. Yeah. So you can see now there is a mask being applied. What I kind of want to do is change the size of that so it fits better in that phone. Yeah. And maybe right over the ridge there, because I still want it to look like a phone. Even though our hand will, will create that feeling, like something holding the phone, the shape, there's context that helps us see that. Yeah. I'm going to lighten up this phone a little bit and see what other things can... Yeah, we can start to pull the parts of the phone so you get a sense of what it is. And yeah, this highlight worked out really well because there's mystery and then there's some, some reveal. Now I want to kind of see this frame of the phone. So what I'm going to go ahead and do in this mask is erase a few more things. So let's hide that for now. And look at this greasy phone. And start to get the frame back. So just using the wand. It's not clean. I'm going a little quicker than I should be. So you should take your time when trying to, to cut something out. And I'll play with some different cut techniques. So, you know, if you've seen the module before, it showed some Dada posters. And, and those weren't made on the computer. Those were hand cut and pasted together. So you might want to have some really rough cuts to show the handmade look and, and 
you know, this almost the subversion of the of what you're saying. So I've selected it. I'm going to go to Select Inverse or Shift Shift or com Shift Command I and delete that part of the mask. Apply it again. Might again want to adjust. adjust this accordingly and then I'm gonna put my phone back so you can see that Might even play with some color overlays and see. Well, Might do something to uh, start to pop some of those blinds out. Like a slight warmth. Yeah, playing with the opacity. Oh, I realize that I want to hide it from there too, so I'm going to go back and just knock this part of the phone out because that's the ho I'm using the old phone. That works. If you're done with the clipping mask and you're happy, you can actually go ahead and release the clipping mask by rasterizing it, and there it is. Notice that I missed a spot in the clipping mask, so what I can do is select the other layer and just go ahead and backspace that. And that'll just clear up anything. All right, so let's let's keep trucking on. I feel that that's not obvious enough, but so I might play with some color overlays. Eh, we'll see. All right, so now to add more imagery. I want to start talking about Google and, and the ability to Google something. So I went and I downloaded just, I screenshot the search button. So I want to add that into Photoshop. Yeah, the easy accessibility to it. I'm going to, I'm going to see what I can do. So in just in the image, I can, I think I'm just, I'm not going to keep Google. I think I'm just going to keep the search bar because it's such a, almost a pop culture item itself. So I'm gonna bring it over. And I thought about doing it enough, doing it in a way, since we can still recognize it. So I'm just using the transform tool right now. And I'm gonna put it underneath, maybe right above the hand, yeah. Scaling it, oops, scaling it, and 
I'm liking what I have so far because there's some great diagonals. Nothing feels still because there's movement and and uh, yeah, I think if I had like three of these coming from the foam, it starts to talk about you know using the Google search access. Yeah, I think uh, maybe. Maybe just a slight, yeah, yeah, that's cool, it's, there's a little bit of chaos, and I'm now I'm going to use these little bars, I think they're perfect for adding some new information, so this is where I might, I think I might bring in Google, excuse me, Mr. Ash Jeeves here, he's a little bit pixelated, I'm going to try, so I'm going to select the, it's nice, it's a neutral background, Select inverse. So remember, select inverse. That's what allows me to grab the positive shape. Go into the polygon or even the lasso tool here, and I can just, oops, by holding option, I don't want the Ash Jeeves. I just want the little butler, Mr. Jeeves here. And anything else I don't want. So this outside perimeter, I think there's a little black there, so that's what's selecting. Yeah, I just want Mr. Jeeves here. Cut that out. Paste it here. He's really small. So I don't think I'll be able to do too much with him. But I think... Miss Poor Mr. Jeeves here. I'm going to make him upside down. X. Yeah, I think I think that's pretty interesting. Might not live there, but for now. I now have an image I want to work with um, and add, but I want to give it give it a uh, cut paper treatment. So I'm going to go into the lasso tool and just create a little bit of abnormalities to the to the tracing to show. It works really to show the handmade quality to it. Um, nope, I don't want to do that. Um, and working with a mouse is really a lot easier than using the trackpad, so I highly recommend the mouse, but it works either way. So having some broader areas. And I'm releasing the mouse as I go around, so all I have to do is just pick up where I'm at by holding shift to reveal the plus symbol, and that's just going to add to whatever you've already started selecting. So, yeah, I just do pauses. I'm not too worried about trying to cut the whole thing at once. It's just, it's too stressful. So, go around... Trying to get some inconsistencies to make it look hand cut, but not creating too much jaggedness because it will get too distracting. So almost going really quickly will create interesting cuts and looks. There are tutorials out there that if you want to achieve the definition and depth of what cut paper looks like, you can actually see how you can create treatments just using the layers panel. Feel free to look those up. I will not be describing those right now. Um, because it's such a, a small little thing and there's plenty of tutorials where people do that and they do it really well so feel free to look those up once I've got everything selected I'm gonna cut it oops I missed a spot cut it yeah and go back to my image paste it in if there's an area I don't like like around these lips I could just either go back and cut some more or just take the eraser. Yeah, I'll probably just 
going with the lasso tool to get to so it stays consistent and make it less ro rounded. Yeah. I'll just cut this. And yeah, I think that I think that looks good. It looks like cut paper. And yeah, there's a nice blend of modern 90s and old school medicine drawings. So I just kind of want to see if I liked where it was positioned. Off the page is also great. Yeah, I think I think that's nice. I want to explore negative space and kind of overwhelm the viewer here, almost like the shape of the brain, like my sketch. So I'll delete this. So it's really starting to come together. Um, I want to add an element to my phone besides the blinds. I might not even do with the blinds anymore. I think I think it's moved past that, but I'll leave them there for now. Um, I think I want to add the element of the scrolling of the phone and how much we see per day gets to be so insane, like how many images we see. And, and so I was opening up the New York Times on, on my computer and I was like, well, wait, what if I got the view of, of the New York Times? Like it looks like on my phone. If you've ever done that, you could simulate what it looks like on your phone. Because most web pages now are built to break for like the iPad, as you can see here, or tablet, and then here for your phone. There's a great little um, add on plugin if you're using Chrome that will allow you. I'm sure they have it on all browsers, but Chrome has a plugin that allows you to do a full page screen capture. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. It's an easy way so you can see it's actually taking a picture right now. And it's going to sit, and then I'll be able to save it. And now I have a large one. I'm not going to need the entire thing. So I'm going to bring that into Photoshop. And I'm going to add a filter to it first. I think I want to apply some kind of, oh, it didn't capture some. Did it up here though? So what I might do is take this because there's advertisements and I'll start to merge them together. It might even try to maybe find some that look a little more interesting. Maybe some text down here would be nice. And just kind of hodgepodge create this this look of the New York Times but really they're gonna be like shapes so there I only need a little bit I'm gonna merge these layers again you do not have to do this this is just a part of the my process you're getting to see I'm gonna turn it into a grayscale by going image mode grayscale and I'm going to go image, image size, make sure. I'm going to up the image size for now to 300 resolution. Right now I'm going to add a half tone. So a half tone is a dot pattern that creates the look of black and white, but it's really dependent just on the size and the distance between the dots. So I'm going to go to image mode and bitmap now you see is open. It's going to ask me to flatten. I'm going to go and type halftone screen, hit OK. And the frequency is the amount of dots per inch. So I want, I don't want a lot of them. I'll, we'll try 20 and then the angle, right, is the angle the dots will line up in. So maybe a, 
a 35 degree angle. We'll see. And I want a, a true half tone, round, and I'll hit OK. Yeah, so this is, if you, might, if you look at the newspaper, you'll see this. If you look at the newspaper really closely, this is what you'll see. I like it because it distorts the image and it won't be too distracting. So what I'm going to do is cut and just take about this much. I don't think I need all of that. And and uh, scale it down. put it right over my phone we're gonna hide the that one <laughs> and yeah so at this point I, I, I just don't think those blinds are needed um, what I'm gonna do is maybe add a uh, multiply tool okay maybe the blinds are needed we'll see at this point I'm gonna figure out a way for this to look interesting on top of the phone here. So what I want to do is maybe duplicate this layer and make it a shape or a color. So we'll assign it a red for now, very political, political red. And then this one, we will just hit multiply and let, yeah, let the red do its thing. It's a little too bright. What I don't like is it's, it's still too representational. So I'm going to go back and brighten up these colors a little bit. They're, they're too grayed out. So I'm going to go in and try to get a lot of contrast. Yeah, there we go. I think that'll be better. And then maybe a little bit more brightness. Yeah. And now I'm going to try that half tone again. So image mode bitmap. Half tone screen. I'm going to do a 10. Yeah, I think that's going to look a lot better. So now I'll grab that again, and put it on my screen. Something nice about it, just it really creates a punk rock look to this editorial page. So I'm applying a slight warp to it so it configures to the screen. You can go to Edit, Transform, Distort. And you'll just have to play around with the points to get the right. Yeah, I think that looks great. I'm going to delete this shape and I'm going to see what this looks like. Yeah. Okay. So now I want the look. One, I want to be able to get my thumb back, right? So, so it looks like my thumb is over top. So I'm going to hide this briefly just so I can be able to, uh, Trace the thumb. I want to completely get rid of that. I could also apply a mask if I wasn't sure. But I like where it's at. So 
I will go ahead and just delete. Oops, not that one. <laughs> I will delete this one. And now we need to make it look like it's over the phone, right? That's in the phone. So here's my solution. I just decided to cut it back out and use a sh color overlay. And yeah, so far, pretty happy. Um, gonna add a few more treatments and then decide to add a little bit more photos too. So um, I want to see what my hand looks like. Maybe also with a texture or, or half tone of some sort. So I'm going to go back to filter, go to um, filter gallery. And what's nice is you can preview them all in sample. So it's also based on the swatches here. So if you want it to be reversed, you would just switch the, the um, swatches. So you'll see now. Oops. You'll see in the filter gallery, it's now changed. Zoom out. And yeah, you can play around with all sorts of treatments. And you can mess around with some of the settings. So I like to look and, and see which one I start off with. But I always adjust it and change it, no matter what. You know, I'm never happy with how it comes out. Like brush. You see, if you start to edit the settings, it looks out. It looks better. I think this could be nice. Start to mess around with the levels. Yeah, I think that's really nice. Yeah, I'm gonna try that. Let's see. Yeah, that looks really nice. So it still looks like a hand. Um, I can even say I want to keep changing it. I would cut this I would and um, undo paste it paste special paste in place so say you lost a little bit of detail you could do a multiply function and get that back but I really like the look of it I might just go in and try to maybe either do a color fill another color overlay yeah there we go I think that's starting to look like something nice. So play around with textures. And I'm going to continue adding some detail. So now I want to add a background and I'll continue adding more images. But I'm going to create a new layer, re rename it, and just go to my fill tool here and go ahead and paint bucket and side that I don't want it to be too intense and make sure it's behind everything a eh, little too passive a little more saturation hit it again yeah that's better so now you can start to see some distinctions some of my um, items are translucent I might even wanna mess with their translucency even more yeah. I'm going to go ahead and add some text to it. Start off with black. I like the word diluted. Um, it's the core of it's the core of this idea that this information isn't whole. So, in the nature, I might even look at some of those Dada posters and um, from our course and look how they did text so it's very Victorian very poster sized it's stacked some of its legible some of its not okay I'll even go to the next page 
where I have some tips for you. So, composition, theme we have, contrast, starting to get some contrast. Uh, next week I'll explore a few more patterns and textures. Typography, yes. Bold letter typography, color. Alright, so yeah, I think um, typography is considering. It's getting there. I'm going to mess around with the layers. I think I'm going to put it in front, in behind, but in front there. And perhaps a uh, future is a great typeface, though. I'm going to go into my character panel and change the tracking to be more prominent. And I'm going to figure out where I want this text to be. Yeah, I think there works really well. Now to make sure that it's readable. So I might cut away. So I'm going to rasterize this text. I'm happy with it. And I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to delete only this part. So I'm going to unselect using my polygon lasso tool. I'm going to unselect this part so that I can erase. a section of this. Yeah. So it looks like the text is wrapped around it slightly. So you can see that it still says diluted but without the text covering the entire thing. I now want to actually add something to the Google here. What I might do first is rotate it here. Yeah. So that we can type something in there. This one should be a little bit more of a an easier to read sans serif. Probably Arial. Looks like it's in the search bar. And I'm going to rotate it. I'm not sure what text I want it to say yet. I do like the idea of it being bigger than just conforming to the size. But there's also something nice about Not sure what I'm gonna write here, so I'm gonna be to be decided. <laughs> I have to think about that. And now my composition is really coming together. I'm gonna utilize white space to my advantage because it's about this. It's about the centerpiece. I might decide and reposition a few items. And I'll keep going. So I'm almost done. I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. I changed the color. 
And I found this little book that I want to add. Um, I decided the other books were just a little too modern. But when I pasted it in, it was really kind of pixelated. Remember, you can adjust those things by going to Image Adjustments Threshold and messing around with the lightness and darkness of it. Yeah, like this. What it's going to do, it's going to make it translucent. And what I'll go ahead and do is just delete the outside part and decide that if I want to make it, no, I think I, yeah, I think, I think that looks good. Yeah, I think that way it matches. See. It's nice to have a lot of variety, but some uniformity is nice. So having this and this match, and and this texture here, and so I might go around now and decide what needs to stay modern and what needs to have a texture to it. So I think I think this is a good place to stop. So get to this point this week. Get your whole composition, and next week. I will show you how to age it or apply some interesting new textures to it. This is the final image that I created with the spelling correction as well as a few color treatments. Next week we're going to apply a little bit more textures to uh, explore aging or um, you know adjusting the image to match the uh, mock-up. Uh, you'll see over here, I have the mock-up that we're going to work on next week. I've adjusted the colors to look like it's printed on the paper, and I'll even apply a few more textures. That's next week's. This week's, uh, just get your image going, make your sketch, and start assembling it. You know, that way you have plenty of time to adjust the colors, adjust the textures, and mock it up next week. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what you create. And, um, as always, if you want to show me your work in progress, you can email me. I will give you feedback as soon as I can.